Hello, my name is Michelle Noonan from Divi Soup and in recipe number 30 I'm going to show you how to create a slide in section using the Divi toggle module. For our ingredients all you're going to need is the latest version of the Divi theme from Elegant Themes. This should take you around 10 minutes to set up and for our preparation we're going to set up the section. So just before we get started, this is what we're going to create. In the top right of our screen, we've got a little tab that when you click on it, it reveals content that we've added to the toggle module. And when you click on the arrow, it hides again. So the first thing you want to do is open an existing page or create a new page and add some content to it. I've here just got one of the default Divi library layouts and I'm going to add my toggle to this page. So what you want to do is add a standard section with one column and then I'm just going to drag this up to the top of the page. You can actually place this anywhere on the page but I'm just having it on the top for ease. Then you want to open up the section settings and in the advanced tab, in the CSS class field, you want to add a class of ds-top-toggle-section. Now click on the design tab and scroll down to the spacing section and you just want to add in zero custom padding in the top and bottom fields. And then finally click on the content tab and you want to set transparent background color to yes. And then save and exit. Now for the method. So next we're going to open up the row settings and in the design tab you're going to scroll down to the sizing section, set make this row full width to yes, use custom gutter width and then set the gutter width to 1. Scroll down a bit further and in the spacing section you're going to set the top and bottom fields for custom margin, custom padding and column padding all to zero. And save and exit. Now we need to add in our toggle module. So click on insert modules and click toggle. So firstly click on the advanced tab and we're going to add a CSS class of ds-top-toggle. Next, in the design tab, you want to set your icon color. So I'm going to have mine set to white. And then all of the other fields are entirely up to you. You can set your fonts and your text sizes um, all in the design tab. When you've done that, click on content. Now we're not going to add a title because our title is actually going to act as our trigger for the open and close feature. So just scroll past the content area for now. You want to set your state to close and then you want to set a background color for the open toggle, close toggle and the general background color and they need to all be the same. So you can just select any background color, but just make sure they're all the same. And then when you've done that, you're going to want to add your content into the content area. So it's entirely up to you what you want to add here. I'm just going to paste in some pre-written HTML that I have and what I'm doing is I'm using Divi's responsive column shortcodes to split my content into three columns. So once you've done that, save and close. If you preview your changes, what you'll end up with is just a toggle sitting at the top of the page with your content in it. So we need to add some CSS to get this toggle looking like the demo. We're actually using 
relatively little CSS considering what this effect is doing, but let's go through the sections. So the first section of CSS here is the most important. This positions our toggle module outside of the viewable area and gives it a high Z index so that it displays on top of all of the other content. Our next section here just removes the default border that's applied to the toggle. And then this section here is our title within the toggle, which acts as our open and close trigger. So we're positioning that absolutely and we're making it full width as well so that our icon sits at the right side of the screen. And then below that, we're setting our toggle icon. So the first section is to display the toggle icon when the toggle is closed. So we're giving it a background color and this color you want to set the same as the color that you set in the module settings for the background of your module. We are defining the icon here and we're rotating the entire container for the icon by 45 degrees to give us the triangle effect. Now, I've changed the default icon because the default icon is a plus sign. When we rotate that, it becomes a cross. So I've changed the icon to a cross so that when we rotate it, it becomes a plus again. And then for the icon when the toggle is open, I've switched out the minus sign for an up and left arrow, which once rotated by 45 degrees displays an up arrow. In the next section, we're setting the width for the content of the toggle. So I've got this set at 1080 pixels, which is Divi's default content size. If you've changed your width of your content for your site in the theme customizer, then you'll probably want to change this value to match that. You don't have to, but it just makes sure that the content of the toggle is in line with the content of your site. And then finally, we are just setting the overflow for the entire page to hidden so that our toggle, which is set outside of the viewable area, doesn't create horizontal scroll bars. And then the CSS under that is just my custom CSS for the content that I've added to the toggle. So I'm going to select all of this and copy it. And you're going to want to place this in your child theme style sheet or the custom CSS box in Divi theme options. For ease, I'm going to place it in the page specific CSS box. So now if you preview your page where your toggle was sitting here just above your content, you can now see that you've got the corner icon and if we click on that, our content slides down and back up when we click. And this is fully responsive if you're using um, Divi's column shortcodes and you can see that it looks good on any device. So if I just go into responsive mode and open up the toggle, you can see when I drag the screen out how the content moves using those column shortcodes. So you can put any content in there that you want. There are plugins that you can use to add shortcodes and there's links to those plugins in the post accompanying this video. It's also a good idea to save the entire toggle section to your Divi library as a global module so you can add it to any page you like with just a few clicks. And that's it. To get the CSS accompanying this recipe, head over to divisoup.com forward slash r30 and you can also sign up to my newsletter to receive all my latest content straight to your inbox. Thanks for watching.